We welcome you to another time of uh, uh, here. Uh, welcome to another time of worship here, Miss United Methodist Church. Appreciate y'all being here this morning. Let us begin our time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love, Lord. We pray, Father God, as we gather together, Lord, that you would bind us, that you would make us one people of one mind and one accord. Father God, uh, cementing us, giving us the foundation of your love and your grace, and Lord, on your name. So we pray, Father God, as we gather this morning, we thank you for your love, Lord, and we pray that you would help us, Father God, to push in. Lord, to see beyond our limits. Lord, to not be stopped by the uh, things that come before us, Father God, but to be able to push in and get closer to you, Lord. Not just to reach to your hand, but Father God, to reach for your hands and Lord, to be close to your heart. So we thank you again for all that you do. We pray, Lord, that you continue to lead us and guide us. Father, let us see you, hear you, and know you today. And Lord, help us to love each other. And we would be, be here for each other and help those in this community find their place in your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing fine this wonderful morning. I have a couple of announcements to let you all know. Um, on February 1st at 6 uh, p.m., we're going to have our COM meeting. Uh, we invite uh, y'all to come and be a part of that um, so we can begin to plan um, and not only plan on what we're doing for the following year, but also how we're going to do it uh, for the following year. So if you could come and be a part of that, that would be great. Um, I want to let you know that uh, the first Sunday in February, during the uh, during the, the worship service, we're going to uh, do a recognition of leaders. So if you have a position um, that you're starting this year, we would like for you all to be here um, on that day uh, so we can recognize you. But that also is twofold recognize your um, your willingness to serve, but also um, let others know who's in those positions. Um, are there any other um, announcements that I have missed? After Sunday school, that uh, Jason Hill will have a finance committee meeting today. Okay. Waving at me or him? <laughs> All right, take, take your hymnal, stand if you're able, page 98. 98. <laughs> Thank you. 
81. We will do our affirmation of faith. Page 81. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead of Mary. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and said, The right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. would uh, turn to the uh, back of your um, bulletins to see those names and the situations we are praying for. Are there any that need to be added or can be removed? Marjorie Graham is already on there, but we got a call that she was taken to Savannah um, Friday with extremely high blood pressure and extremely high sugar. Okay. And they put her finally in a room yesterday. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My brother in law, Danny Sides, he's still on there, but he went and had his PET scan done a couple of weeks ago, and with all the chemo he's had, it has still spread. Mm. Um, no remission on it whatsoever. So he starts radiation this coming week. It is spread from his, pan his pancreas over to his spleen and the blood. Can we add Francis Palmer? Shirley Palmer's husband has got cancer and he started to chemo this week. And I had asked Dana this week to add Cole Marsh. That is Rob Marsh's two-year-old little boy, he's got a strand of the COVID, and he is in the hospital, and it has done something with his heart. So they need extra. Any others? Dear Jesus, we come to you, Lord God, as one people of one mind and one accord. Father God, standing in the gap, Lord, standing on your name and your promises, Father, that you would hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for you, we pray to you this, these names now, Lord God. For those that uh, we have just lifted, those that are continuing to be on our list, those in our heart, Father God, and those in our community. Lord, we pray that you would hear them. Lord, that you would heal them. That you would help them in their situation, Father God. Give them every resource that is needed. Lord, but most importantly, that you would give them hope and love, Lord. 
that in their darkness, in their time of trouble, Father God, they know that you are with them and you are helping them and loving them. We thank you for all the things you do for us, Lord God, all the blessings you have given us, Lord, all the great things that we see uh, in you, Lord, as you work in our lives. So we pray, Father God, that you would continue to do so, that you would continue to give them light in their darkness, Father God, heal their body and their mind and their relationship. We thank you again for all that you do, Lord God, and we pray that you would help us to continue to move forward, continue to push in as we uh, seek your face, Lord God. We thank you again, and we pray now like your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. He is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Would uh, stand if you are able. And, uh, go to him on page 600. 600. <laughs> salvation. We thank you, Lord God, and as we give today, we pray, Father, that you would help us to have the strength, to have the purpose to go forth and spread those words of life to others, that they may too know how to be in your hands. We thank you again, in Jesus' name, amen.
Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. It's just a little last minute plan. We have a requirement for the Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes,
That's what following is. Now, I know you guys follow Jesus, because guess what? You're here. So, God bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, because we need more of, of those that are following Jesus. But since we're talking about pushing in, since this year, or after the last year that we had, we want to we want to do we want to catch another view. Okay, we want to we want to do we want to get closer to God. We want to kind of push away the the things that are happening in front of us or around us, and we want to get closer. And that's what we need to do. We need to get closer. We don't just need to follow. We need to push in, and we need to follow so we can do radical things. Because I'm here to tell you, Jesus is about being radical. Radical is the, the definition of the word, and I looked it up, and all it, all it says to me is extreme. Radical means extreme. And if, if we look at the teachings of Jesus, they're extreme. Right? Forgive your enemy. Right? The, the weak are going to inherit the earth. You know, um, if somebody beats you down, now you got to you know, pray for them. All these, you know, love is the, the, the key thing. All these things are radical in their understanding. At the time of Jesus and in our time too. Because I hate to say it, in our, it's, all about, it's all about the individual. It's all about me. It's all about what I want and how I want to accomplish things and what I want to do and, and, and it, it, you know, stepping on people to get to the higher levels and all that stuff, right? But Jesus and the way he teaches and the way he does things and the way he wants us to be is a radical thing. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, if we latch on to God, something's going to change, right? There is no way that you latch on to God and you remain the same. But the issue is, I think, that when we continue to come, right? You guys have been, I've been with y'all for a long time, and I, you guys have been coming to church even before that. So because of this continuous, and we just come, and we just do, and, you know, it just gets to be kind of an everyday, every, every week thing, that we forget where we're coming to. You are coming to the house of God. Would you put on your galoshes and your PJs if you were walking into the White House? If you were invited to dinner, would you walk into your PJs and your galoshes? And if you say yes, you're lying. You would not. You would not. Right? You would not walk in. You would not do that. But because we come every day to the house of God, because we continuous thing that a lot of us don't don't come the way we're supposed to come to God. So nothing changes. And everybody says, well, every time I want this change, you let this change. Well, it hasn't changed because we haven't changed. Our expectation hasn't changed. Our want, our desire hasn't changed. We're not walking to God like we're supposed to. Right? We're not giving ourselves and everything we have unto God and he can take over it and he can make us be radical. Radical. When I first got here, right, a while back, I was the most radical person that you guys have seen. I, we have kind of gotten together now. I'm not as radical as I used to be. But I was radical. Why? Because I was extreme. You guys have never seen it. You have never heard it. You have never experienced it. You know? And that's what, what we need to get back to. We need to see God as something radical. Something extreme. And when we see him that way, then we need to become that way. Yes, we're following God. God bless you. But if you just follow him and follow him and follow him, and don't expect to do anything, and don't do anything, don't be closer to him, then all you're doing is walking. You're not really following. We need to follow him in a radical expectation of what God is going to do. Because God is radical, guys. He is radical. He's extreme. 
He'll change your life forever. But there's one thing. We have to let him. We have to let him be able to change us and lead us into a place where we can, we can see God. You, we need to see God as God is, okay? You know, one of the things that um, on the Facebook, and I have these sites that I follow, and there's this guy that kind of promotes being a dad and everything. And one, of the, one of the things that he says is, is, don't ever let him forget that you were dangerous. Don't let him forget you were dangerous. There was a time, because you see me as you see me, right? But there was a time in my life where I was a pretty dangerous fellow. Okay, I was, I was extreme in the wrong ways, but still extreme. We cannot forget that God is God. Yes, God loves you. God has given you salvation. God is, is, is all about love and care and community and all that kind of stuff. But he's still God. Right? He still put the, he still hung the moon. He still created everything. He'll still rain down fire and brimstone if he wants to. Right? We can never forget that God is God. We have to see God as God. He's holy. He's loving. He's graceful. Absolutely. But he's still God. You know, in, in the, uh, when I was reading uh, from Matthew, some of the commentaries I was reading, it, and they were saying that, that the, the, the possibility that these, the, the, you know, all these disciples, before he called them, had seen him, heard him somewhere, before he said, follow me, that, that was, that's a big possibility. And in that, he said that they had to, they probably saw his eyes. If you looked into his eyes and saw who he was, that's a beautiful picture of being able to know somebody. You can look at somebody in their eyes when they speak, and you can understand who they are. If they're telling the truth, if they're passionate, if there's somebody that you want to follow, somebody you want to listen to, and that's how we need to do. We need to look into the face of God, and we need to realize who he is. We need to see God for who God is. We need to know God for who he is. We need to understand that he's God. That he can change our lives. That he can change this world with the things he is. And that he can do anything. He can raise the dead. But do you believe it? Do you live it? Do you breathe it? Do you understand it? Do you speak it? That's all a part of getting closer. We have to believe that God can raise the dead and that he can use us to do it. Do you believe that? Do you believe what the Bible says that if you have faith, that you can tell that mountain, jump off the, off the mountainside and go into the ocean. Do you believe that? If you have a little doubt, then you need to get closer to God. You need to see his face. And not only that, you need to put yourself in a situation where a mountain does come off the, off the hillside. You need to go out and see life get back into somebody's eyes that were dead. And that's the only way we're gonna know God. We have to know God. We have to see God who God is. That's the first step. And in us accepting and being part of him in his radical ways. It's the fact that we need to see God for who God is. We need to have an extreme understanding of him and his ways and what he does. We can't just you know, follow just to follow. We need to know that when we follow God, things are going to change. And once we see him, once you know who he is, and once you understand all that God is and all that he can do and all the radical stuff that he has come to bring into this world, then we need to join him. 
We need to join his purpose in John, and you guys know this verse. Everybody knows this verse. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the purpose of God is what? Save people, right? That's his purpose. Nobody be condemned, everybody be saved, everybody have the, the way to salvation. Awesome, right? I mean, that's, that's an awesome thing to do. So we need to join in that purpose. And I mean, when I'm, when I'm talking about joining, I don't mean, okay, I'll, I'll go do a couple things and go over here to some program and, and join up. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it needs to be a desire that drives us from our heart. The fact that we need to help others find their salvation. And it needs to come from the deep bowels of, of our own selves to know that when we receive salvation for ourselves, whenever that happens, that God put everything in place, things happen, people talk and pray and did everything like that, so he can reach down his hand and suck us out of the mire that was dead and set us on the ground and say, you are not alive. That's what that means. That's what that means. Not just, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go help. I'll, I'll, I'll try to speak to you. I'm not talking about that. It needs to be a, a deep down inside desire that people know that there is a way to be saved for eternity through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. It needs to be a, just a bubbling up desire to go, man, there are people out there that are not, that don't know God. And guess what? I'm going to find a way to reach them. Whatever that way may be. It can't, you know, uh, when I was before, um, I saw, you know, I accepted Jesus. You would see these things on the TV about kids out in, you know, different places that need this and that and the other thing. And, and we just, I would just bypass. It didn't affect me. You know, I, I had nothing to do with that. So, you know, or you walk down the street and there's a homeless guy and you just kind of, you know, go look him in the eye and you move on until I was home. Until that happened to me, until people didn't see me anymore. And, it, and until God took me out of that situation and put me right side up. And then I realized, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. We have to begin to see that those situations in the world as something personal, as something personal. When people don't have salvation in, in, in Jesus Christ, we must take it personal. We must be going, I can't have that. I can't have that. I can't have people around me, in my family, in my neighborhood, in my place of business, not know the truth about Jesus. It must be personal. The fact that people are out there not having salvation. It's up to those that have it, those that know God, that have seen God into his face and into his eyes, that we must go forth and spread the good news of that gospel. And there is a way, there is a way that God can be extreme in the people's lives and he can reach them and make them the best it can be and have salvation in the name of Jesus Christ to rise up out of their situation. To receive the grace and mercy that God has for them. That is our purpose. In, um, in Matthew, I can't lift my finger. In Matthew, um, chapter 28, um, verse 18. It says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So we talked about his purpose. Now we talked about his work. We need to be about the work of Jesus. The work of God is to make disciples. Yes, we need to speak the words of life. Right? We need to help them find their salvation. But after we do that, we need to rise them up. We need to build them. We need to teach them. We need to pour ourselves and God into these people that they may know that once they stand up from the altar, they have a life in God and God will be with them and they will be disciples. That they will have that, that radical understanding of God in their hearts and their, and their, their speech and in their mind and the way they see things that they can move forward and in turn help others find the salvation. But they need the foundations of everything that God has taught them. They need to know the Bible. They need to know his purpose. They need to know the history. They need to know the future. They need to know all those things. And the only way they're going to know that is to be teach them. And to teach them, in turn, we need to know that. We need to be about his work. We need to do everything just like we, uh, we focus ourselves in the things that we need in our family, right? Right? Those of you who have kids know that the kids need to eat, right? You need to have clothes to go to school. They need to um, pay for those things that school wants them to, to do and have and everything like that. So guess what you have to do? You have to work, right? You have to work. Everybody knows that. And that's cool. Work. That same devotion that we have because of those things, we need to have in God's, in God's business. You don't want to show up to, to the pearly gates and say, hey man, you know, you gave me five talents and I buried them. Here are your five talents back. That's not the guy you want to be, right? You want to come back and say, hey man, you gave me five talents. Here's 25 talents that I have given back that I have poured myself into people, that I have tried to, to help them understand your grace and your mercy, that I have led, that I have done, that I have been, that I have gone. Here are your 25 times. And God's going to say, Amen, brother. Come on in. You don't want to be that guy that, that gives back the, the, the talents that you've got. You want to multiply them. And the way you multiply them is by pouring ourselves into God and making it personal. Make it personal. Because if it doesn't touch us, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. It needs to be personal. We need to take it and make it into a radical thing in our life. And, okay, so we, we need to see God, right? We need to be about, we need to join God and we need to be part of his family. I mean, 100% part of his family. We need, there needs to be a connection. Right? That connection needs to be personal between you and God. Whatever connection you have, however that happens, however it needs to happen. Some people, it's about the cross. Some people, it's about his grace and his love. Some people, it's about, it's about personal connection. To me, it was about his feet. He took the feet from that beating was meant for me. I was meant to get that beating, and he took it. To me, in my way of thinking, and how I grew up, that is the biggest thing anybody could do for me. Just take a beating. That wasn't meant for him. Whatever connection you need to make, that's the connection you need to make. It needs to be deep. It can't just be superficial. It needs to be a deep thing, a deep connection that we have with him. And we need to create empathy. You need to care. You need to care. Like I was telling you, you know, uh, I'm not a big animal fella, right? I'm, animals are not my thing. But hanging out with Cindy, right? I know that she is. I care about Cindy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to care about animals because I care about Cindy. I did it before. 
I, I don't want to hurt them, but I just did it. It wasn't something that I, you know, not a big deal, right? But Cindy cares about me. But because I care about Cindy, then I'm going to care about Anna. We need to create empathy. There are people that are lost. There are people that don't know the way. There are people that are in darkness. There are people that are hurt. We need to have empathy. We need to create that because God cares about us. And we need to care about them. It needs to be personal. And one thing I, I want to tell you, we need to be people that don't just want to see in God's house, but we want a place. Think about that. We just don't want a seat. You just don't want to come in and have a, you have a seat. You want a place. A place is better than just a seat. We need to come and we need to develop a place in God's house, in his family, in his hands, in his heart. We need to create a place for ourselves. And the way we do that is by connection, by giving everything, by removing those things that keep us from giving everything that we can become radical followers of God. That everywhere we go, we bring the grace and the mercy and his spirit into everything. We must be radical in our following of God. Just don't follow. You need to follow so closely that you're actually mimicking, imitating, becoming Jesus for everybody. That we actually follow him in every movement, in every aspect of our of our lives and our thoughts and our speech, that we can change the world. And not be the only ones that get to heaven, but that we bring multitudes with our want and desire to be the closest thing we can be to Jesus Christ. So I'm telling you, he is the only thing that can change this world. Amen? Amen? All right, we're going to close with 557. Five, and if you are able, you know, let us sing 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. 557. Five, of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you follow him, but do it in a radical way where you can change this world in his name. Amen. Amen.